Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here like always. In today's video, we're going to do a quick review of the canary breeding season and how it's going so far. We'll talk a little bit about some of the mistakes that I made, so hopefully you don't make those same mistakes as well. Now, you're probably wondering if you've been following this channel for a while now, why did I get back into canaries? For those that don't know, the majority of the breeding that I do is with finches, mainly African and Australian finches. And I started this back in 2009, so I've been doing it for quite a long time now, just working on exotic finches. But after a while, I started to kind of miss a canary. See, prior to 2009, I also had canaries and a variety of other birds. I've kept lovebirds, parakeets, conyers, pigeons. If it's a bird, if it has wings, if it has feathers, I have probably kept it. But I got tired of doing what I do, and every once in a while, it's good to have a little bit of change. So, as you can imagine, I went back to my roots and I started to work with canaries once again. Now, I'm working with color canaries. That's the only thing that I'm able to keep at the moment here in the bird room because of the amount of noise that we have in here from a variety of different species. If I were to keep a song type of canary, that would affect the canary song. For example, German Roller, if the chick from the German rollers hatch, you have to start to train those chicks with specific songs so that it can sing like the German roller. And if it's influenced by all of this noise that we have in this bird room, then it would just have a mixture of songs and so on. So the only canary that I'm currently keeping is the color canary. I have red mosaics, whites, and yellows. And those are the three that I currently have. Hopefully later on, I'll expand to a little bit more different color canaries as they become available in our market. The canary breeding season starts in December for many of us here in the United States. This is when we start to kind of put the birds together. We start to pair them up. You have the divider in the middle and you start to watch them to see if they're ready to start the breeding progress. And usually by the beginning of January, if you've conditioned them correctly, you'll notice that your male is singing more, you'll notice that your female is showing interest in the nest and so on, and this is the time when you pull the divider out. There are a few little factors that will show you when your canaries are ready. Number one, like I've mentioned, the males are gonna sing. Number two, the females are gonna start playing with nesting materials, but there are other visual clues that you can use. Like for example, with the males, if you grab them and you look at their vent and you blow on the vent, you blow those feathers out of the way, you're gonna notice that they have an enlarged cloaca. Now the cloaca is the part of the bird where they defecate from, pee from, and so on. But this is also their sex organ. And the cloaca on the males will look almost very similar to the back tip of an eraser from a pencil. You're gonna see that it is gonna be extended and it is gonna be, in other words, erect. Now this usually means that that male is in breeding condition. For the females, it's a little bit different, but similar. We're not looking for an eraser style protrusion or something that pops out like in the male. What we're looking for is an oval style cloaca. You're gonna notice that their cloaca is a bit more oval towards the bottom and you want it to be a bit swollen. When you see that she starts to get a little bit of swelling in her cloaca or starts to puff up a bit or dilate, that's how you know that that female is in breeding condition. She's ready to start making eggs. So these are small visual clues that as breeders we use to know when to pair these birds up. Now, once you know that they're ready, once you get them to that condition, you go ahead and you pull out the divider and then the rest is history. By then, the female and the male will start to build their nest the female will eventually lay her eggs, and then you'll eventually get the chicks that you've wanted. Now, along the way, you may encounter a variety of problems just like I have here. This is the very first time that I've started breeding canaries again in a couple of years, and as you can imagine, I'm a bit rusty with it, so I've had a few problems. Now, in order to get them into breeding condition, I do a couple of different things. I offer them higher protein sources of food, for example, egg food. I also give them vegetables. And then from there, I give them sprouted seeds and a couple of other breeding supplements. Like for example, one of the main supplements that I like to give, which is a, a breeding powder for these birds, and I mix it with their egg food, is OptiBreed. And I also supplement some Fertivit, which is another supplement which is very high in vitamin E, and this usually helps them get into that breeding condition. And this is usually one of the problems that many people have with canaries, and it's one of the problems that I started to have back here with some of the pears. 
All of the pairs have gone to nest. Only one pair, I believe, out of eight has not laid eggs yet. The female has a swollen cloaca, so I know that eventually she will be laying her eggs soon. But the biggest problems that I see that many people have with canaries, and it's one of the problems that I ran with back here this year, is that unfortunately the males were not in condition properly, but the females were. And this is something that causes problems for everybody. What happens is that your female's in condition, she's ready to lay eggs, but your male is not in optimal breeding condition yet. So he may not mount the female correctly, he may not mount her at all. And what's gonna happen is that that female will go on to lay eggs regardless of the male mounting her or not, and she's gonna incubate those eggs. But those eggs are never going to hatch because those eggs were never fertilized by the male. So you have to make sure that both of your birds are in proper condition before pairing them up. If your male's not in condition and your female's in condition, then she's just going to lay eggs that are never fertile, that will never hatch. And eventually, you're going to lose the entire cycle because after she lays one or two clutches, then you only have one or two more clutches left. At most during the breeding season, here what I like to get out of every female is three clutches. That is the top or the most that I will get from them before I swap them out and put a different female. So as you can see, if you waste the first clutch, then you have two left only. If you waste the first two, then you only have one left and so on. So you want to make sure that they're both in breeding condition before pairing them up. Now it may also be reversed. It may be the other way around. Your female may not be ready and your male is. And this is also a big problem because males will get aggressive chasing the females around, but these females have no interest in nesting because they are either too young or still not in breeding condition. So be careful and make sure that your birds are paired up correctly. Make sure that they're both in breeding condition. Do all the proper things that you need to do prior to taking that divider out in order to get them to breed. Now, some of these back here, unfortunately, I've had to toss eggs away because the first clutch went infertile. Um, so as you can imagine, now I'm working towards getting these males into the proper breeding condition. And that's, that's my fault. Um, I rush things sometimes. I tend to want things done a little bit faster than the birds want to do things. And this is, as a breeder, you learn this over time with experience, with headaches like these. You start to realize that these birds don't move at the speed that you want them to move. They move at their own speed. And as a breeder, it's your job to look at them and find these little cues that let you know when they're ready to go. Not when you want them to go, but when they are ready to do these things. So unfortunately, I've wasted the first batch on some of these canary pairs back here. But some of the other ones are fertile. So I'm excited about those. Hopefully, they're going to be hatching very soon. And once they do, I'll go ahead and show you what these little guys look like. Like always, guys, if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, remember to hit a thumbs up, like, and follow so you can see future videos when I show you guys these little guys hatching. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and we'll see each other in the next one. Bye.